Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Josh. I'm Jenna. And today we have an exciting episode for you. We're not starting in our normal spot, but we are still broadcasting live on Facebook. So if you have any questions uh, throughout t uh, today's morning show, feel free to chat those in and we'll stop several times throughout the show. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of hands-on applications. Uh, in today's morning show and you just came back from SGIA mm -hmm. in New Orleans which is one of the biggest trade shows of the year so we're going to hear a little bit about what was happening at the show. Uh, but before we get into all of that I needed to make some new show shirts to get <laughs> traveling for next year and even just for wearing here uh, during our video broadcast on Stalls TV so we thought why not save those and make them during the morning show and try to teach you some concepts. So that's where we're going to start off over at the heat press. So we're working today with our 16 by 20 Hotronics Fusion. This could be any heat press. Uh, we have this swapped out with our 6x10 attachment, which is great for your smaller uh, placement areas. I use it a lot when I'm trying to do applications uh, for left chest logos. Let's take a close look uh, at this platen. On the Fusion, it's very easy to swap out the attachments. There's just a pin or a latch where you can uh, take the platen off and drop in the particular size, but um, there's some other ways that uh, people can print uh, small placements as well through pillows and pads and different inserts. So we're going to start off. This particular garment is an OGO uh, Performance Polo from Sanmar. I'm going to start by threading it on the press. You'll notice that we're hanging off the uh, buttons and seams and everything into place. And then we're looking to place our graphic. Uh, first, let's start with a preheat. I always forget that step. You're Some, not alone, I do too. <laughs> somebody actually commented in one of the video broadcasts we did last week that Josh doesn't like to preheat. <laughs> and so I, I just forget it. I do like to preheat and it is necessary to remove the moisture and wrinkles. So when you look at this now, uh, basically for your left chest placement, you want to drop it about six to seven inches on this large shirt down from the top uh, corner of the collar. Now we have some uh, buttons in play here that will help us with our placement. Um, I usually like to think of where this shirt is going to fall on the wearer and make sure the left chest placement is placed appropriately on this particular one that's going to be in line with this lower button. Um, also, uh, pinching top shoulder and drawing a vertical line down to sort of center your graphic onto the shirt helps with placement as well. Um, a lot of folks will lay this out off of the press so they can see the whole shirt and then they'll actually use thermal tape, tape the design into place and then bring it back over to the press as a, a quick tip. Now, do you want to talk a little bit about this material while I'm doing the application? This is the SuperTech. Yeah, so this is our SuperTech gloss clear, correct? Not the matte? Correct. All right, so it actually is going to have a nice glossy, glossy sheen to it, uh, which kind of just switches up a lot of that full color digital uh, application because some, mostly you're seeing a lot of matte materials, some metallics, but this is just really unique in getting that uh, sought after wet and glossy look that you see a lot in retail. And I think it just really switches up how you can achieve different um, logos for left chest whenever you're using this material. Uh, what's nice about it is that it can be applied to a lot of different materials. A lot of our materials in the tech line can be. Uh, so anywhere from this performance shirt without any scorching of the fabric to uh, faux leather even, which is a hard to print material also. Now the clear gloss is a single step application and a cold peel. You can break it up into two steps if you have a heat sensitive item, but single step application and a cold peel. And I'm going to hold this, um, try to hold this close to the camera here so you can kind of see you get that gloss or wet effect. You can see the gloss coming off of the film. Uh, this is extremely soft on this particular garment and we're getting a lot of different colors here all on a single layer. So I load the next shirt up, which is going to have an opaque finish. Do you want to talk about how someone can either produce this in-house or order a full color digital transfer from us? Right. So if you're doing eco-solvent printing um, with either a Roland or a Mamaki, you can use this media uh, to print on. So it's definitely a roll good that you can just load right into your printer. Uh, if it's something that you're not doing in-house is eco-solvent printing, you can actually order this with custom transfers from us. It's called CAD, CAD prints. Yes, CAD prints. So you can just send in the logo and it will or will produce this for you ready to heat print. So it'll come printed, weeded out on a transfer sheet and all you'll have to do is heat press it from that point. Good, and so that transfer would come just like this if we move to our close-up cam here. 
Um, this particular one is an opaque material. It's called Express Print. So we have a lot of different formulas in these transfer types or this printable media depending on what you want to create. So just like you probably know fashion film and thermal film for our single color heat transfer vinyl, there's a lot of choice here. The first one was a clear material, which is ideal for white or light colored fabrics because it's transparent. This one has a white backer on it, which makes it ideal for darker color fabrics. And so this is express print. Um, this shirt happens to have a pocket, which is going to make my placement uh, a lot easier. Now the pocket is uh, very thin, uh, the seam structure is very thin, so I'm not really going to worry about raising that print area up above the pocket because it is such a, um, a thin sort of uh, seam structure, I don't have to worry about that. I can sort of fight through that with just a little bit more pressure. So position that into place, and then I lock it down for the recommended application. I did a quick little quarter turn on the pressure to compensate uh, for that little seam structure and express print single step application. You can actually print this material not only on a solvent or eco solvent printer, but we've recently uh, certified the express print for latex uh, printing as well. And so we have a lot of people that will use a latex printer and it prints with a nice uh, crisp clean quality. Now this shirt's probably going to blind my camera, but we'll do our best uh, <laughs> job here to see if it'll uh, show it. But you can see uh, we put a white bleed around this just to make it a little easier from the production side and make the logo stand off of the garment, but this is also extremely soft and just an ideal way to customize with corporate logos because when you're thinking about decorating uh, a dress shirt like this or a polo shirt like this, of course, the first technology you probably think of is embroidery. Right. But heat printing is a viable option, not only for single color stuff, but you start to get into multicolor logos, full color logos, the ideal that I can get these transfers um, all on a single layer press in one application. It's a lot quicker than having to hoop this and sew it all out. So it's just an al alternate price point and the quality is nice. So Good. Yeah. you may see me wearing that next week on the, uh, well, not on the morning show next <laughs> week, but anyways, on the next Stalls TV video. Yeah, and it looks like we have a question from Edgar. Uh, what material can we put on mugs? So. We actually, not yet, uh, we do not carry a material for that, but that's something you would want to look into sign vinyl or decal vinyl. Um, is there a printable media for decal? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of different choices. Uh, we have a sister company in Printables Warehouse that carries a whole range of uh, pressure sensitive or sticky decal vinyl like material, whether that's for a car wrap, a mug. Uh, whatever uh, a window graphic, whatever the application would be, there are both uh, single color choices and there are full color choices and the same sort of options, clear versus opaque, meaning the white uh, backs, a lot of different choices there. So we have Evelyn joining from Winter Springs, Florida. We have Carlos from Chicago, uh, Dee from Oregon, Christy, I believe, from Maine. So we have all sorts of folks joining and giving shout outs. We always enjoy hearing where you're watching from, Atlanta, Alabama. Uh, anybody watching internationally today outside of the U.S., uh, make sure you chime in and let us know. We have a worldwide audience here at Stalls TV. So, speaking of a worldwide audience, you were at SGIA, mm -hmm. biggest convention of the year uh, for, for the graphics industry. The decorated apparel industry, I'm still going to say the ISS Long Beach, the imprinted sportswear show in Long Beach is the biggest for apparel decorators specifically, but when you look sort of at the broader uh, graphics community with uh, signage and all the different applications, SGIA is a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. In the stalls booth, what sorts of things were popular? What were our viewers, customers liking within that booth? Well, of course, that's going to be more um, apparel forward, but um, a lot of the uh, applications were very intriguing to a lot of people that haven't seen it before, so foil was huge. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a dedicated area where we were applying adhesive and foil, and um, as always at any trade show, attendees just love watching that process because it's so unique and new to them, and it's not something they've seen a lot mm -hmm. that you can do with a vinyl cutter or a heat transfer. Uh, it's usually seen with screen print, um, but even some of the screen printers that aren't, weren't familiar with being able to use foil with their screen print were kind of just like taken back like, oh my gosh, I can do this. And I think it's so sought after because you're seeing it a lot in retail. Yeah. Uh, so it's now something that apparel decorators can incorporate and sell to their customers, which just kind of makes it 
awesome for them to yeah. offer. Yeah, Foil always draws a crowd. Uh, a couple of reasons why, I think. One, it's a unique application mm -hmm. with how it's produced, so there's sort of that technical knowledge that you have to have in order to use it successfully. But you're right, people want to show this. It's something that's sought after uh, really by a pretty wide range of people. I mean, Foil's popular in children's apparel. It's popular um, in, in school spirit apparel. Mm -hmm. It's popular sort of in higher fashion at retail. So there's a nice span of potential customers. And it's a, a unisex product, so um, worn equally by uh, men and women. So I think there's uh, demand sort of across the market for foil as uh, a special effect. And actually, we're going to show you uh, a foil application here shortly where we're going to show a really cool uh, knockout design effect and a technique that you may not have seen before uh, with foil at the end of today's show. Uh, what else outside of foil? Uh, patterns was a big one. Uh, so I think it's unique to our customer base because um, they can choose what colors go into the patterns and that's not something you can achieve with other suppliers. So them being able to see all these stock patterns and being able to see, okay, I can choose from this color chart and choose what colors go into each of these patterns. So it really helps them out whenever they're decorating for um, local businesses or schools, being able to incorporate their patterns. It just ultimately helps them sell a new finish. So if they're going to a school and showing them patterns mm -hmm. and being able to put their school colors into it, they're really going to be wowed by that. Um, and I think also it helps for holiday printing too because uh, you can incorporate purples and greens and yellows for Halloween and people are starting to stock up with Christmas colors. So you're seeing a lot of red, white, and green there too. Yeah, and so just real quick demo of this. So it's only take a few seconds if we can switch over. Um, taking a look now at my computer screen. Uh, you take something popular right now. So let's take for fall, everybody loves plaid for uh, fall and winter. You take a color pattern like this, and I'm on the stalls.com website designing a custom roll of heat transfer vinyl. And basically, you select your pattern, and there's a lot of different choices here, and then you select your color. So I can start with a popular color range. Uh, if I want to swap out and um, customize here and throw in, that doesn't look good, but throw in blue with red, you can get the visual right on screen um, to sort of know uh, what you want and what looks good and customize your own custom roll of heat transfer vinyl. And there are about 100 different color choices on there. Right now there's about 50 different patterns. And then you end up with a roll of heat transfer vinyl that's ready to load into your cutter. So uh, we see it in our digital production. Right now you see a lot of orange and black rolling through in a variety of patterns and even some purples for Halloween. Uh, you see a lot of different <laughs> making a ruckus over there. You see a lot of different uh, combinations of pink for breast cancer mm -hmm. awareness. And we're starting to see the sort of holiday color colors roll through the production line. So pretty unique. Now, if you have your own solvent or eco solvent printer and you can use the products that we showed earlier, you can print your own patterns within objects and so not a big deal for you. But for those of you that um, have looked at those before, you know, to get into a printer, it's about $8,000 for the right type. Um, so sometimes it's easier just to order the designs. Uh, pre-printed. So patterns very popular. What else? Anything else? Uh, the weeding table is is always a hit at trade shows. If you've been to any of the ISS shows and stop by the stalls booth, it's always fun to just go up there if you don't have one already to weed away material and see the difference. Uh, but what customers don't understand is, okay, they go up to the table and they're like, so does it have a light underneath of it? Like right. how does this make it so easy? And they don't understand the concept of just heating up that material makes it so much easier to weed out your designs and saves you so much time in production. Yeah, you want a quick test of that, just preheat the bottom platen on your heat press and next time you're weeding fashion film or any hot peel material, throw it on there and try to weed it and notice the difference. And then you can quickly see the value of having a specific device that warms your material uh, for weeding. So that's a big deal. Now, some of the other things that happened at the show outside of in the booth is uh, Stahl's rolled out some new innovations. Mm -hmm. And if you visit uh, tedstall.com, you can actually read a post um, all about these new innovations. Uh, Ted actually traveled uh, to the show, was in a special uh, meeting room that we had where, where we were previewing new products for 2018. Uh, a couple of those highlights that he blogged about, um, two products. One is called Aquatrue, and this is a uh, dye blocking product that we're going to talk to you more about. And another one is an innovation in heat presses, which is a lower heat platen for presses to help eliminate or reduce uh, the scorch mark challenges that we know those of you printing performance wear are seeing. So uh, just quickly to talk about that, the and more details will be forthcoming. And if you visit uh, Ted's blog, which is just Ted Stahl, 
www.thepreregisteredlist.com. You can actually uh, sign up to be on the pre-registered list to be the first to know when those products are available. Um, so the AquaTrue product is a, uh, a dye blocking product that you can order as a screen printed transfer or you can order in a sheet to be cut out to cut your own personalized graphics. Now, you've seen a lot of growth in the sublimated fabrics, right? And I'm, mm -hmm. I know we've had challenges here printing those fabrics with our existing products. Um, this solves that problem. Right, right. So any of those uh, digi camo that was really popular for a while, or is even still now, so we have a product that can be applied to that and it's not gonna start showing through. Uh, some people like the effect of it coming through, but ultimately if you're putting it maybe on a baseball jersey, you're not gonna want that to pop through because you want the name and number to stand out ultimately. So um, being able to have this product to eliminate that completely really helps especially if you're printing for sports. Yeah, so go there, read more about that, and then just to touch quickly on the lower heat platen, we just wanted to preview these and point where you can get more knowledge. Um, the lower heat platen actually warms the material, warms the garment from the bottom, mm -hmm. and it's no uh, secret, I don't think, that adhesives tend to gravitate towards the heat, so it seems logical it would just make sense to heat that garment uh, from the bottom, and there will be uh, options forthcoming on how you can purchase a lower uh, heated platen for your auto clam series of heat presses for the last however many years um, where you can plug that in as an attachment to your existing heat press mm -hmm. in the interchangeable platen slot like we just used and still use it in combination with top heat. So really cool innovations. Now there are some other things happening in the booth. I see some customers that visited that may have uh, been in the booth. Steven says, what about the Muse laser? <laughs> There's too much to talk about in 30 minutes here on the morning show. but. Uh, the Muse laser was another uh, product from Stalls where it's a desktop laser. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about the benefits of laser cutting heat transfer films for a while here on Stalls TV. Yeah, totally to eliminate the um, need for weeding is huge for people that are doing vinyl cutting right now. <laughs> yeah, so being able to etch out uh, small details of a graphic, being able to blow through cavities mm -hmm. completely, even on names and, and things of that nature. Uh, this desktop laser system is a new one that we've just launched from Stalls, and we can actually set you up for laser cutting uh, with the perfect solution for our heat transfer uh, materials. Um, that is a desktop sort of, I, I would say, entry to mid-level user model. Um, we still work with universal laser systems, mm -hmm. and if you're looking to go high-grade professional laser, uh, universal laser systems uh, definitely is the way to go. So we'll continue to educate on the differences between those models and which one is right for your business. All right, so I think that covers a lot of the popular items at the show. Uh, just talk briefly with us about uh, classes. Uh, yeah, so we did classes obviously on the popular products that we already talked about. So we had a lot of people migrate to that section of the booth where people didn't even have a place to sit. They were standing out in the aisle just to watch these classes uh, from heat printing foil to uh, showing patterns with mixed media like glitter flake and uh, foils and me other metallic materials like fashion film electric. Um, and also um, heat printing um, with by layering. So any direct to, direct layering with glitter flake and fashion film, and then also showing how you can trap glitter flake to make it look like it's layered even though it's not. So, so just to, to interject on that topic, as I, I saw a question come through from Gina uh, specifically about layering and the patterns, um, asking can you layer on the patterns or do we need to do a knockout? So any rules you want to offer for layering with the pattern heat transfer vinyl? I've always used uh, patterns layered on top of another material. Um, as far as layering anything on top of that, I haven't actually tested that or experienced anything with that. I know that you don't want to put foil on top of patterns because the foil will actually adhere to um, that material. Right. So um, as far as layering, I'm pretty sure you can layer glitter flake on top of it, but anything else I'm not sure yet. <laughs> You're looking at me like I'm going to jump in and provide the answer. Yeah. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know the answer to that one. I know you can use patterns on top of other products. As far as putting product on top of patterns, I'm not sure we've tested that use case because we haven't had a ton of demand for it, mm -hmm. uh, but we can certainly look into that and see if it's uh, something we can report back on. Uh, the other question that came in, uh, how to promote Stalls Vinyl in India. Uh, if you email us at international at stalls.com, we can give you more information about where you can get our products in your country, or if it's not available there, whether or not you can resell. Um, some other comments. Uh, do we ch charge the same price for foil as heat transfer vinyl since it doesn't last as long? 
Uh, foil is considerably less than most brands of heat transfer vinyl. There's a lot of different price points. Uh, the foil will last 25 plus washes as long as you have it applied properly and you're, um, we always recommend hang dry. I mean, you can run it through the dryer, but it's going to dull down uh, the foil finish. So hang dry is all, always going to keep that more vibrant. Even when we say 25 washes, though, that doesn't mean it's actually like falling off the garment. You mean right at 25, just it doesn't starting, come off? It's just yeah. starting to like look more distressed and low luster as opposed to that like vibrant mirror-like finish. So even though we say 25 washes, that's just because it's starting to lose that really vibrant finish, but it's still going to hold up on that garment. Yeah, I'll give you a for instance. I I printed a pair of uh, leggings, uh, dance leggings for my daughter Um to wear, she wears to dance class every week sometimes, multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we printed that at the beginning of last year. Um, so it's been through a lot of cycles, more than 25, and it still looks new, but we do hang dry that, mm -hmm. right? And so we're not having any of that issue with it running through the hot dry cycle. So it's all in how you care for the product. Okay, I almost forgot look of the week because we were really excited <laughs> about this one. So let's roll it over to today's look of the week real quickly. And we have Tiffany that submitted the dabbing skeletons. Which one are you, Jenna? Um, you're definitely the one in the middle, I'd say. The one in the, the middle. I said, hat. Tiffany, if you could hook that up with some Jordan sneakers, that would definitely be me <laughs> in the middle. Um, me and, we, and Courtney will be on the outside. <laughs> Jenna and Courtney on the outside. This is a really cool design, though. It's fun. Um, obviously, we, we think, I don't think it was identified in the post, but this could be a glow-in-the-dark heat transfer vinyl, which would be really cool, or it looks really cool just in uh, white heat transfer vinyl. So just a, a cool way to tie in a group sale is what I'm looking at here where we've customized sort of the dabbing skeleton for uh, with the hat probably to go along with a uh, particular buyer's style. So a uh, fun design from Tiffany that we wanted to share this week. Congratulations on being featured with this week's look of the week and there are many ways to submit uh, to be a part of this. You can share on Stalls All Things Heat Printing. You can email them to tv at stalls.com or you can tag us on Instagram in no particular order other than <laughs> random. Those are the ways to submit to Look of the Week. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. Let's take a look at some questions here. Okay, Brian says he is not successfully layered on top of Express Print, um, but have layered successfully with Express Print on So top, offering so. some feedback to that question. So yeah, that's sort of the use case that we're familiar with as well, so we'll test the other way. Um, Thanks, Donna. <laughs> she says we're the best at sharing tricks and tips. Thank you. And Vishal says I love Chameleon. And so uh, Chameleon, just to point that out, Jenna, if you want to sort of move to the left or the right a little bit. There we um, go. <laughs> this shirt uh, behind Jenna was done with a product in the U.S. market we call CAD Cut Glaze. Um, in the international market we call it uh, CAD Cut Chameleon. Basically this is a transparent like heat transfer vinyl that gives you that popular tonal effect. And we did a whole class last week on uh, being inspired by retail trends and creating things uh, that you can sell in your store. And that's up on stallstv.com. That's where these two garments behind Jenna uh, were created as well. Okay, so keep the questions coming in. We're gonna head back over to the heat press. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna pull up some looks you've shared. Um, these weren't submitted for look of the week, but they were just shared on our Facebook page because it's gonna tie us into our last section over at the heat press. So something that's been very popular, and you don't really pick this up at the show because we're showing actual products and not necessarily design concepts, right. but knockout designs or split text designs, uh, these sorts of concepts um, have been very popular, especially in spirit wear applications. And so we've seen a lot like this. Well, this was shared on our Facebook feed, um, I guess 16 hours ago. And you can see uh, different customers sharing in different looks where they've completed uh, knockout designs uh, with our heat transfer vinyl. So you can see all kinds of uh, different options that have been customized. This is popular. Um, I know it's something that's selling all around the world right now, these knockout designs. And so we've come up with what we think is a pretty unique take on knockout designs where you don't have to be a graphic artist. So one of the biggest challenges with knockout designs, right, is you need to know how to set up the artwork so that second color is separated but conforms directly to that text and you don't have a lot in between. The idea is that it would become part of the text and be legible, um, all text without any extra clip art elements in two colors or more. And so I know you've done tutorials about how to do that. Um, generally it's it's a lot of steps right it is yeah it most certainly is especially if you aren't used to doing a lot of artwork so 
I am on CatWorks almost every day. So it's easy for me to just be like, okay, these are the steps, done. But to be able to learn that is definitely like, I'm looking, if I were new, I'd look at that and be like, what did she just say? So okay. a simpler option would be um, what we're, what we're about, to, about to show you, yeah. Yeah, so if you like foil, which we report as a trend, and you like knockout designs, we're gonna show you how to create a really cool concept with foil and a knockout design, which would be tremendously popular without having to have the art intelligence or watch the full tutorial, but we have the uh, tutorial on Stalls TV, but without having to learn all that. So let's head over to the heat press and walk through this concept. Okay, do you mind uh, loading in this, let's do 11 by 15 inch platen. We're gonna switch out uh, our attachment into the 11 by 15. I'm gonna rotate it for my design. And then let's walk you through this. Actually, let's zoom at the heat press um, because this is a, a really unique concept. So first off, when you're cutting heat transfer foil, just to make sure we're all at the same baseline understanding here. You start with a roll of adhesive only product that's going to be loaded into the vinyl cutter. That material is cut in a mirror image, just like any other heat transfer vinyl. The finished result of that cut in a mirror image should be a clear adhesive design. We've weeded all the excess and picked the centers of the letters to create our design. So you can see full uh, team pink design that's been customized here. Typically, you'd press this onto the shirt, put your foil color on top, and the foil would stick to the full design. Okay, now when you're working with heat transfer products, you're probably all familiar with a Teflon sheet. So a Teflon sheet is typically a loose sheet that's used as a cover sheet that is laid over top of your heat transfer design before you press. I use craft paper a lot because I like that one better, but Teflon is sort of a non-stick cover sheet. So the adhesives won't stick to it. It's very easy to clean and wipe off. And so what we've done here is we've actually taken a roll of heat transfer mask uh, it's a sticky backing material similar to what it, your heat transfer vinyls are backed with, okay? And we've taken that sheet of mask, we sell it on our website, it's called Medium Tack Magic Mask, okay? And we've squeegeed or laminated that Teflon sheet to the mask, okay? Hopefully we're following along. Basically what we did is we made that Teflon sheet cuttable. All we were trying to do is back it so I can load it into my vinyl cutter and cut it. And so, we cut some very simple uh, silhouette-like shapes here. You can see a heart, a Christmas tree, and a awareness ribbon. In this particular case, we're going to, we weed it around the Teflon, we're gonna just pull out our awareness ribbon. We basically get a cookie cutter Teflon template, we'll call it. There's no official name, but we just called it that. <laughs> All right, you wanna hang on to that for a second sure for thing. me? Now, let's show you how this application works. We're gonna create this knockout design with two colors. Start by loading our garment onto the press. In this case, we're using this uh, Cavio garment. Is this something new from Cavio, by the way? This particular style, do you know? Not the style, but the fabric that they're using in the color block piece is new for them. All right, I'm, I'm working to get a very light pressure, so that's what you see here. I'm looking just so the handle barely falls down on the uh, shirt itself, you want basically no contact. I'm going to start with laying down my adhesive design. In this case, it says Team Pink. Make sure it's lined up. And I'm going to follow my normal adhesive application, which is press it at 300 degrees for five seconds at a very light pressure. Yeah, it's key to get that light pressure in order to get a nice, durable application. And then it's like a hot to a warm peel. It's peeling it off. It doesn't really matter if the shirt stretches too much. I'm just gonna sort of lay it back in place here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna take, with my adhesive down into place, I wanna position my uh, cookie cutter template. In this case, we're gonna aim for like the center of the design. Lay that in place. Basically, that's gonna be a blocker layer. So when I lay my sheet of heat transfer foil, what do you wanna do, a primary color of pink or silver? Silver. Okay. So we're gonna take our sheet of foil. We have a roll of foil here. What's this pattern called, do you know? 
Waterfall. Waterfall. Silver, we have a lot of different water. silver patterns, so we're going to cut a sheet off of the waterfall silver foil off to the side, and we're going to lay that down. Okay, now we're going to cover it with our normal cover sheet, and we want to apply this at a very firm pressure at 300 degrees for the 10 seconds. So I'm going to turn up my pressure, lock it down into place for 10 seconds. And then it becomes a complete cold peel. I don't know if you can see it through the camera. I can kind of see sort of the um, outline of the image and then also where it's blocked the foil from applying to create this effect. I'm going to slide this off and just sort of let it cool down here. We're just letting it cool down. You can lay this to the side. You can hold this up against a table or a cool surface. Uh, to pull the heat out of it a little bit quicker. Basically, after that's been completed, we're going to remove the foil. And then you're going to remove your blocking template. Okay, you can kind of hear it sort of slide out and no adhesive has stuck to this. Okay, and then what you want to do, you can see the design is sort of pulled out of the foil. Now I want to take my second color of foil. In this case, we're going to do pink. And do you mind threading that back onto the press for me? Position that down, and we're going to apply it. Now, if you ever have little areas of foil, that sort of looks like the edge is rough. Sometimes the foil, if it doesn't release properly at the edges, it can just be scratched away and sort of brushed off. I recommend doing that at the end as a final step. That way it doesn't accidentally come back over to your adhesive. So I'll position my second color down and it's going to fill in all the gap space for me. Give it, I already had it on a firm pressure. Won't hurt it to give it a little more. And give that the full application as well. The adhesive vinyl is called CAD Cut Adhesive. It's available from stalls.com. So again, this is going to be a cold peel. Pull that off, hold it against the table to cool down. Are there any questions coming in while we're waiting on this to cool? Yeah, we are. Uh, is, the, is this adhesive vinyl? So yes, the adhesive is just going to work like any other heat transfer vinyl. You're going to load it into your cutter weed away the excess material just as you would um, any other heat transfer vinyl but this is actually going to be a heat activated glue type of vinyl so it's just getting activated underneath that high heat in order to be able to stick the foil to it okay our finished result you can see how the awareness ribbon pulls right out of the text and you have a completed design now there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Tough to see the silver on a white on camera, but it does look really cool and soft. Now you have to know your silver is going to dull because that received two steps of application and the uh, pink is going to stay the nice bright uh, foil luster. So we've taken this concept and just to walk back through the steps one more time, we're going to do uh, another garment here. This one's holiday inspired. And just with the Christmas tree, let's load this on quick and go back through the same steps. So if you want to keep an eye on questions as I'm pressing this. Absolutely. Does that mean there are no questions when you Not say absolutely? Yet. <laughs> okay. All right. So what kind of foil is that? So we used our silver waterfall. And then we used our pink. So there's two types of foil that we use there. And we sell this foil on the stall's website, uh, but it's just a general foil. And how does the foil hold up in the wash? Uh, this is tested for 25 washes. Um, after 25 washes, you're gonna see this kind of start to dull a little bit, uh, get a little bit more distressed, lose its high mirror-like finish. 
uh, but it's definitely going to start to lose that after 25 washes. Um, but it will still hold up on the garment. It's not like it's going to start falling off or anything. All right, and Diane asks, is the Teflon cover sheet and the brown craft paper the same thing? So the Teflon is actually going to have a type of coating on it that allows any adhesive uh, to not stick to it. All right, so if I were to use the craft paper for this, I may chance that sticking to the adhesive. Um, but the Teflon cover sheet will not. So that's the main difference between the two of those. Yeah, and the cost of this foil is just really low. Um, so when you look at even adding a second color, most of your cost is in the adhesive product itself. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to cost a whole lot of money to do a, a two color foil or a knockout design. Right. And any of the foil that you're seeing here does not have any adhesive on the back of it. That is exactly why we're using the CAD cut adhesive that we pre-cut and made a heat transfer out of. Uh, you can use foil with screen printed transfers. If you're using screen printed transfers from Transfer Express, they have those application instructions on their website. It's going to vary since you're applying it to a screen print transfer as opposed to the adhesive, so just be sure to check those application instructions. Okay, we're letting this one cool down. We've already have the background applied down. All right, and then I saw another question. Um, they're coming in pretty quick, but whenever you purchase the foil, the adhesive doesn't automatically come with it, correct? That you have to order that completely separate. So if you're ordering any foil, just be sure that you're adding an extra roll of, adhe of adhesive in there. You can use the cookie cutter Teflon pieces as many times as you want. Uh, these are not getting ruined from any of that adhesive that we're placing on top of there. So you can use that as many times as you need to. Yeah, there's no adhesive on this. It's still perfectly usable. Right. Right, and the material for the tree, again, is that Teflon cover sheet. We're just putting that on a masking and cutting it out on the vinyl cutter. All right, we're using medium tack mask for that. So if you're looking for a masking to purchase, it's on the stall's website under medium tack magic mask. And you'll notice, I mean, I think you see here, I'm putting a, a pretty firm pressure on that foil. So we always get um, complaints actually where there's little pock marks or the foil didn't apply properly. Um, two keys. One is apply that adhesive with a very light pressure. That's absolutely key so you have a good base for the foil. And secondly is apply that uh, foil with an extremely firm pressure. That's going to make life so much easier and give you better quality results. Um, also if you want to pick a like a ring spun cotton or a higher quality garment not like a, a cheap $2 t-shirt right. that's an open-ended cotton, uh, you're going to get better coverage because the adhesive's not going to go through the um, sort of uneven fibers of the garment in the application. Let's see if we can get a nice look at this. There we go. So you can see that's a knockout design. So notice that the tree is only in the areas uh, where the text is, not a whole lot of artwork involved. All we have to do is cut our text element, cut our cookie cutter element separately, and then just make sure we know the actual tactical steps uh, to go through the process. So nice, easy way to do heat transfer foil, make them holiday inspired or event inspired for whatever your application is really. Uh, we're not going to get to do it here because I don't want to run, run really over on time, but we even did something as simple as a heart or a star can be used for a lot of different applications, whether that's for spirit apparel, dance apparel, uh, many different markets, whatever that may be. All right, so knockout designs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, do you know what the morning show's on next week? Are you doing do blank apparel uh, guide? I know that's that coming up right. soon. That okay, sounds right. Okay, so it's either right. next week or the following week. I know um, Courtney's been prepping for a blank apparel sort of wholesale guide to try to report on uh, different blank apparel options coming out. We've connected with all of our blank apparel uh, partners, those that sponsor Stalls TV with either uh, donated items or low cost items for us to teach you. Uh, how to do all these concepts and they'll be releasing some of their new styles to us so be looking forward to that as we approach the end of the year and start thinking about uh, 2018 and trends and all that fun stuff uh, for planning. So let's just take a look here um, at any final questions before we wrap up. 
Uh, we do sell the um, nonstick cover sheets on stalls.com. So I'm just going to bounce over to stalls.com and show you where to get these products from really quickly. So over on uh, stalls.com, if you want the rolls of adhesive, you just go to CAD cut material and you go to CAD cut adhesive, where are you? I know it's on there. There it is, adhesive. Okay. <laughs> so you see it on that long list of different material choices, adhesive, and that's where you can pick up the actual rolls of adhesive to cut from on your cutter like we just showed. Um, if you're interested in the foil material, you can go to, let's see if I can find it here. I'm just going to search. Right under adhesive. Right under adhesive is the foil, or you can just search keyword foil and click on heat transfer foil. And there you can download the color chart um, and the application instructions. It'll walk you through those steps uh, that we just went through. Um, it gives you all of that. And then if you want to purchase the uh, non-stick cover sheets, uh, I believe those are under the um, heat press cut or print cut uh, area, where you can get this six mil cover sheet right under the equipment accessories. And so that's where you would buy these cover sheets. They're sold either by the yard or in the 18 by 20 sheet, depending on how popular you think it's going to be. And then last but not least, you'll want the medium tack magic mask. So if you just search keyword magic mask, um, you'll be able to find the heat transfer mask that you can use to mask the sheet. So a lot of different components, but we'll make sure we comment in the uh, feed here on Facebook Live where you can pick up all that stuff and link it so it's all easy uh, for you. All right. Can you just use, Jamie asked, can you use a smaller piece of foil just to make the Christmas tree? Yes. Yeah, because I used, I think she's referencing because I cut the big sheet. I was doing that for speed, but certainly you can use the smaller piece in any unused area of that sheet that, that uh, the foil uh, can be used again. So you can reuse it. Foil is one of those products where you can do a lot of cool things. So I always recommend saving your scraps. I know you've done some concepts where you've even taken like triangles and shapes and put a bunch of different ones over top of something for some cool effects. Okay. Uh, using the foil, can you do mixed media? Absolutely. I would just recommend that uh, you watch uh, our foil tutorial, tutorials on Stalls TV because it can get complex with foil sticking to other products. So you need to have the right technique uh, for that. And as far as what blade to use for cutting the nonstick uh, Teflon cover sheet, uh, 45 degree blade or whatever you have loaded in your cutter should be fine. Uh, we happen to cut this one right on our settings for fashion film, which is about a 12 to 14 on the graph tech, about 100 to 140 grams of downforce on a roll under other cutter. So lots of different choices. And then if you have, you don't even need the magic mask if you have the, what are they called? The cutting mat for the brother and the cricket. You can just lay the sheet straight down on your cutting mat if you have a small craft cutter and cut your templates that way. Right, and the thickness for those isn't a lot as well. Um, I pretty sure the thickness is at a two. Whenever I cut it on the silhouette, the brother scan and cut typically a one and the um, cricket is usually just on the iron on setting. Okay. Well, it's almost lunchtime, and so we ran a little bit over on today's morning show, but hopefully you enjoyed the extra applications and techniques we were able to show you. And we want to thank you for attending live as always, and we'll be broadcasting again 11 a.m. Eastern Time next week. Thanks for watching.